as you can see in front of you, there is a new Age of Empires 4 patch. Which means we're going to be playing the game again and giving it a try and hopefully uh, find some joy in it again. Animation cancelling is gone. That's the most important part. That's going to allow just for every civilization to pretty much play the game as you would think that they should have the opportunity to play. So let's go through this quickly here. Uh, patch 11009 is releasing later this week. It's already out. This is a preview kind of, of what was coming in the patch. Uh, focusing on responding to a number of items you as the players have brought to our attention. As always, we appreciate you for acting as our compass as we continue to balance and improve. This time around, we're making some general... Wait, Reddit says the animation cancel for Elephantos is not fixed? Are you kidding? <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, this time around, we're making some general changes to Siege to ensure there's sufficient counterplay. Making changes to reduce animation cancelling's impact on rate of fire. Wait, so they're making changes to ensure there's sufficient counterplay. Uh, making changes to reduce animation cancelling. Does this mean it's still possible? Impact on rate of fire to refocus on high level strategy. And doing another pass on balance for a variety of our civilizations. I don't like the wording here. I thought it was completely gone. Okay, we'll find out eventually. Okay, let's just... Uh... No, we've added two additional notes on the general. Removing Warring Islands and Archipelago from Quick Match. Oh, that's good. And adjustments to Quick Match Search. Quick Match Search. Add some bug fixes from Mongols. Okay, cool. Cool. So, we made general improvements uh, to the animation cancelling issues previously called out by players. We'll be keeping an eye out for your feedback to make additional adjustments in this area. But with this patch, units can no longer easily perform faster attacks. Mizu. Oh. Sorry, doggy is barking. Uh, units can no longer easily perform faster attacks. But they can still do it, it sounds like. It's just not as easy anymore? I'm not sure. Intended by issuing a move command after attacking to cancel the cooldown between hits. Okay, I mean, we'll find out as we jump into it, right? But I don't like how the wording implies that it's still possible. Izu. Hey. Sorry. So when playing Ancient Press 4, we want all pl want players to feel like a general and spend most of the time taking, uh, making important high-level strategic decisions. There's more work we're doing that to ensure that we fully meet this goal. Okay, so it sounds like they don't want to have the huge, hugest impact on micro scenarios, but rather the macro aspect of the game and strategic decisions. Fix the bug where palace walls could no longer be targeted. Okay, trebuchet projectile projectiles now deal AOE damage when missing their intended target. I think trebuchets still feel extremely underwhelming as a unit as a whole. It doesn't do as much damage as we would have liked. Okay, uh, fix the bug where incendiary ship's damage range increased significantly after researching the explosive techs. Sounds good. Fix the bug where incendiary ships were exploding two or even more times in some cases. To keep unit balance, we've increased the explosion damage. Was that necessary though? They do more damage now. Okay. Scout cost increased from 60 to 70 food. Seems like a good change. This is a direct nerf to Roos for sure. Because Roos is the city that mostly went for scouts. It's also more of a... I would say it's more of a buff toward... Like indirect buff to civs like English, Abbasid. These civs that weren't making too many scouts or necessarily going for professional scouts all the time. So that's a positive change, I think. I think the biggest issue with newly created scouts is that they regen HP for some reason. We like that there is additional utility to the scout unit besides just scouting. It's got a generous health pool, carries animal carcasses, and provides an effective torch. However, at only 60 food cost, it's quite a bit cheaper than other, any other military unit. Targeting the cost has no effect on a player's initial scout and is especially impactful for the players making armies of this unit. Makes sense? Okay, we already went through that. Okay, they have a short, medium, and long-term plans for making naval gameplay more dynamic and interactive. Okay. We're going to wait for those changes then. Quick match. Um, search time increased from 5 minutes to 10 minutes. 
This means that Quick Match will now search for an opponent that best matches your ELO for up to 10 minutes before pairing you with an available player at lower or higher ELO. Ideally, matches are both quick to find and fair. The shorter uh, give up timer was creating games that weren't fair or fun for either team involved. We think it's better to wait longer to faci facilitate an evenly matched game rather than acting hastily and putting players into extremely lopsided matches. Agreed, I agreed. I this sounds like a reasonable change. Fishing, another OP factor of the game. We want finding a body of water full of fish to be an exciting opportunity. However, the gather rate of fishing boats was creating lopsided games with no combat potential. Absolutely. This modest reduction still makes fishing ships fishing the waters valuable while opening up other strategic avenues for the player who isn't able to fully capitalize. As well, fish is intended to be a scarce, scarce resource like deer or sheep that provides a burst of food for a limited time. Interesting. Um, so, fishing ships harvest rate is reduced by 0.09. Shorefish. Oh, this is only to shorefish. So, the fishing ships harvest rate on shorefish is reduced to 0.66. Shorefish reduced from 1000 to 500, so it's halved. They removed half of the food. Damn. That's a massive change, actually, to, to fish. Especially on those maps that don't have necessarily have deep fish. Things like. Um, I don't even remember the names anymore. Uh, Nagari and the corners tend to not have deep fish. Sometimes you have uh, ancient spires. Those types of maps. Shorefish. Black Forest. Although Black Forest has deep fish as well. Um, yeah, this is a massive change actually. Harvest rate reduced to one from 1 1.1 on deep fish. And also half the food there as well. Those are massive changes to fish. Fish. The new river. That's another one. Those are actually huge changes to fish. I can't wait to see how that plays out. Maybe taking the water won't be as game winning anymore as it used to be. Siege. Siege formation catch up speed reduced from 100% to 40%. Seems reasonable. When units information reposition, they can get a speed bonus. This value maxes out at 40% for infantry and cavalry. However, siege units were moving much faster, and this could make them difficult to chase down, even with cavalry. We standardized these value to 4% to remove the siege race car effect. Why do they have to have a catch up speed though? I don't get that. Why does that have to be in the game? I think we have that in AV2 as well. Where you're, if you're in a formation, you get a speed boost to catch up to be a part of your formation. Why, do, why is there a speed boost? Why don't they just try to catch up with their supposed speed? I'm sure they have a logical reason for it. I just don't see why it should be there. Horseman, Camel Rider, uh, Firelands, and Knight Torch bonus damage versus Siege increased by from plus 10 to plus 20. Okay. They doubled their uh, bonus damage. See how that plays out. From what I understood, they only added more bonus damage to Cavalry against Siege. Cavalry is intended to counter siege weapons. Their high mobility should facilitate the ability to quickly close the distance and destroy siege weapons. Cavalry are more expensive than infantry, so getting a critical mass to quickly kill siege weapons is too costly. Increasing cavalry torch damage versus siege weapons will uh, helps them shine in this anti-siege role. Okay. Bombard health reduced from 480 to 400. The additional changes to Chinese specific bombard health below. Found the bomber's high health meant that he was able to fight cost effectively versus too many types of units, aka every single unit in the game. His primarily role, primary role is anti-building. We're still concerned about the damage per shot of this unit. Yeah, it's not only anti-building. <laughs> Hate to break it to you. Seed weapons now also deal a bonus damage against ships. I think that is very good, allowing for more counterplay on water. Or like combat potential against water. Adjustments made across the board to reduce siege move speed. So bombers are reduced from 80, 0.88 to 0.62. That's a significant uh, reduction there. Spring gall from 1 to 80, 0.88. Mangonel move speed from 0.88 to 0.75. Nest of bees from 0.94 to 0.81. Seems like a good start. Okay, yeah, we'll see how that plays out, but I'm all, all in favor. Civ-specific changes. Abbasid. Age reduction. Like, age up 
time reduced from 120 to 105 for every age. Okay, so you'll be able to get to the next age quite faster. You want the House of Wisdom to feel like a powerful bonus instead of a limiting factor. Interesting, we'll see how that plays out. Abbasid Dynasty and Delhi Sultanate. Increase the explosive dough, so it matches the intended explosion radius, okay. And dough damage increased from 8 to 10. So their arrow ship is kind of more on level with the others at this point. The dough was by far the weakest of arrow ships. We increased its damage to be competitive with the options of other sieves. It's gonna be hard to balance because they also have different costs for the arrow ships, right? But yeah, seems like a reasonable change. Berry harvest bonus increased from 25 to 30. So a 5% boost there. Berry carry capacity from 10 to 13. I wonder how much impact that actually has on your the amount of food that comes in quickly. I know carry bonuses are quite strong. But this, I wonder how much in particular this will be beneficial for them. Kind of many players preferring to take sheep or bears because it saves the village a walk time. They want Delhi and Abbasid to play differently, aka picking up their berries. Chinese, clock tower bomber health reduced from 720 to 600. That's a significant reduction, very good. Official unit can no longer use supervise on landmarks. Thumbs up. I think, wait, on landmarks? What other landmarks were they able to do it on? I'm not sure what other landmarks they had that could use that. Maybe the... Uh, the second one, or the, the dynasty that gives you the... I don't remember the names anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, it sounds good either way. The Imperial official, indeed. Um, Chinese official supervising their clock tower man means the effective output of the landmark is tripled. This level of power was creating less varied and interesting unit compositions, as they could make such a large and powerful mass of siege units. What? When I had like 30 bombards in one game, that was not... A varied and interesting unit composition. Hmm. Reload drills, reload bonus, time reduced from 33% to 20%. This is the one where bombers shoot faster, right? I believe so. That's a good change. These technologies were some of the highest outputs in the game. We brought them down to be in line with similar unit enhancement, like incendiary arrows and chemistry, okay? Nest of bees damage versus ship increased. Fixed a bug where the Imperial officials' tax collection cooldown sometimes didn't trigger, okay? Hmm, okay. I'll give like a, an overall summary at the end of what I, where I think the suits lie now. Before I start playing again. Ajari, a prelate, base move speed from 1.0 to 1.12. They want the prelate to be able to walk around and be more active in the economy, essentially. And also to potentially heal uh, units. They also increase the range of the Inspire, which means that if you're taking sheep and lumber quite close to each other, you can just place your prelate in between and you should have range to reach both of them. This is definitely going to buff my approach where I play prelates instead of the uh, Aachen Chapel. Because... Has there been any changes to the blacksmith? I don't think so, right? Okay, okay. Mongol, several changes made to adjust raid. Base level of the raid ability from 50 to 25, so you get plus 25 and gold now instead of plus 50. Rate bounty upgrade bonus decreased from 75 to 50. Okay. Rate bounty improved upgrade bonus decreased from 175. So just an overall nerf for the bounty rating. Fix a bug where the prayer tents could generate more resources than intended. Mongol villagers will no longer gather faster than intended after completing the improved gold gathering technologies. Did they have that? <laughs> they will no longer gather faster than intended after completing the improved wood. They've been having like these indirect, like non player buffs that we didn't know about either. I haven't seen anyone talk about this. Bruce, high armor technology, fine tuned guns, reload bonus time reduced from 33 to 20. So similar to the Chinese change. What's next? Okay. Um. Hmm. So Chinese are obviously taking a massive hit there. Their, their compositions were a lot around their siege and their uh, clock tower. That's a massive hit to Chinese. They are probably going to be quite difficult to play now, I feel like. They might even have fallen down the ladder to be... Are they possibly the worst saving game right now? 
They might be. I think HRE should be fairly solid. Okay, so let's also take it one step back. Animation cancelling. What civs benefited the most from animation cancelling? Rus, because they had so many scouts naturally. French, they tended to make scouts to make to get uh, professional scouts. Uh, HRE, the same. Chinese, Lancers, uh, they also went for professional scouts quite often. Um, and you have, what's the last one I'm looking for? Mongols as well with the Lancers. Abbasid, Delhi, and English are the three civs that tended to not make a lot of scouts and not go for, for professional scouts. Animation cancelling being gone is an indirect buff to those three civs. Also, civs with, that played with especially early knights. Early knights and knights in the early game. French knights can no longer animation cancelling. Apparently. Uh, allegedly. Uh, Rus, early knights, cannot animation cancel. Lancers in Castle Age from, from the Mongols. You have knights from HRE. And Fire Lancers from Chinese. Abbasid, Delhi, and English indirectly are buffed by animation can animation cancelling being gone. Allegedly being gone. Elef elephants apparently still have animation cancelling, if I heard, heard correctly. That is quite uh, concerning. So, uh, yeah. That worries me if they have not actually fixed that. Also, I'm not sure the wording in here says it's not as easy anymore. Which to me sounds like it's still possible. Which is a bit worrying as well. Um, I feel like Mongols should still be probably the best civs. The Khan is untouched so far. I didn't see any adjustments to repair rates. Uh, Abbasid probably has quite a, a spike now. They're probably going to perform way better in a lot of cases. I think Delhi are starting to look really scary for the first three ages. Like Delhi's, I think Delhi's reasoning to go to Imperial Age these days will simply be to build cannons. I don't think they necessarily need to go to the Fourth Age for anything else than getting access to next tier of units. They're gonna have the power spikes in like mid, late Fuel Age and Castle Age. HRE are probably also fairly good still. French probably remain fairly strong. English probably in the average. Will be very good on some maps. Mm, yeah, Chinese are the one that might struggle a lot now. Hmm. There's, there's no change to Ovu either. I mean, with, with their, they keep nerfing. They have nerfed Mongols in a few different ways now. I, I'm still a bit concerned or worried that the Khan is not addressed at all. Repair rates, things like that. But overall, a lot of these changes seem very positive for the game. So, yeah. I'm excited to see how it plays out now. Uh, I'm gonna go play again, but uh, I'll try to keep this video uh, not passing 20 minutes because we're already approaching that. So, thanks for watching.